I want to uh, state that when you have a war, there's innocent people going to be killed. This is why we have to be very careful about making decisions to go to war, or in this case, uh, permitting wars to continue. The, uh, we're working under the wrong model. We're creating enemies. We're not creating friends. Innocent people are being killed. I mean, so, so, I, so, you know, whether it's the special forces or, uh, you know, a platoon of, of regulars, the people who, who are being injured or, or killed, uh, they, they don't really know the difference about who's sailing them. But we're doing all this in the name of helping the people, uh, which the, the, the whole idea of humanitarian war was <laughs> right. I mean, this is, this is the conflict that we have. I continue to insist on the importance of international structures and regional stru structures for enforcing international law and for peacemaking. Because, because you know, certainly, uh, as Congresswoman Moore has said, uh, women, young girls, have uh, lived under horrible conditions, uh, not only in Afghanistan, but in uh, various countries uh, around the world. Um, but we've got to be careful about whether we place a greater burden on those same uh, women and girls by waging war, whether we put them at greater risk through a military intervention. And once we do intervene, when people join us, uh, as allies in, in their cause, but when we leave, it's inevitable that those same people will be at risk. I mean, that's what happens. That's why the decision to, to wage a war is a very dangerous decision. That, that's why war essentially doesn't work. It doesn't work because it's not only in, in the initiation of it but, and the execution of it, but the aftermath of war. It just doesn't work. We've got to seek a different model. Look at the government as a big engine. And the government, over the last two decades, has become an efficient machine. People say government doesn't work. Oh, it does work. The question is who's it working for. It's, it's an efficient machine that takes the wealth of the nation and accelerates it into the hands of arms merchants, into the hands of coal companies, nuclear companies, uh, oil companies, into the hands of agribusiness. If you look at, at government as being this big machine, you can see that, that war is part of feeding a, a, this, this monster of, uh, of aggression that uh, if we don't break free of this, we will forever be chained to a, a, an economy that is non-functional, to a way of life that is not sustainable, to a spiritual condition that is failing, and we don't have to live that way. So the question is a, is a prof raises profound uh, reflection and requires profound reflection on why are we doing this? Why are we running our country in a way that, that, that not only doesn't make sense, but that causes the wealth of the nation to be taken away from people? And so how, what happens to the people when the wealth goes upwards? That's why you don't have education for, for all. That's why you're, we have unemployment. That's why so many Americans are still not having decent health care. That's why you have so many Americans who lost their homes. There's a connection there. And so just as the previous questioner wanted to see the connection between war and somebody paying a personal price, the fact of the matter is we're all paying a price for the kind of society that we have. And so the, the, the plea here is that we look to change this society. That's, that goes beyond changing who wins a particular election.